Thanks for staying with us on News Hub. And well, we're still really celebrating the fact that we're very blessed to witness the 31st day in the year 2020, in spite of it all. And so at this point in time, we want to take a look at the year in the retrospect and the, the issues, the stories that we featured right here on News Hub. Uh, big ones here and there that we want to take a look at this morning. Stay with us all the program to do justice to, to this is uh, Malam. I mustn't forget that prefix. Malam, Chris, Kendon, Wandu. Sanu. Sanu, Sanu, Sanu. How you do? I do. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did okay, full I grand. I full grand. I full grand. All right. So let's talk about uh, stories that really made it for you in the year uh, 2020. We'll just show back some clips of the things that we did uh, in the year. Chris, let's, let's stay with you and um, let's look at the year 2020 and what it really means for you. Um, it's important um, because I, I was just you know, thinking while the show started, we talked about a few things, she and I, how we went through this year, the COVID experience in March, April, May, the NSAS experience, um, a lot of things happened in 2020. Uh, what are the highlights for you for 2020? Definitely COVID. Uh, it takes the largest chunk, and um, it, it was a year like no other uh, in my close to five decades on earth. I've never seen anything um, like that, and um, it's, um, it's a year that's, um, that was unpredicted. Nobody could predict what happened, and um, we are here just from December, we started hearing and getting news about China, what was happening in Wahum or, or wherever, Wuhum, <laughs> whether now Wahum or Wuhan or wherever they call it. Malam. <laughs> it's called Wuhan. It's yeah. called Wuhan. <laughs> I hope that company won't hold me responsible. <laughs> yes, so, uh, you know, and um, but we just everybody just took it as one of those things and some of those news. Um, you know, one of those diseases that happens in there. in the there, that Western world, and here, they just you know. it won't come here. It will never get to us. Even the developed countries did it take it seriously? Yeah, United States. You see what's happening in US. Uh -huh. <laughs> As of last count, over three hundred over three hundred thousand Americans have died, and um, an average of about two thousand still dying on a daily basis yeah. now. And um, so the Western world didn't take it seriously. They just felt it was a Chinese uh, this thing. But would you, would you completely blame them? Because the, the argument then was, uh, uh, it was believed that China concealed um, information. I mean, uh, how, how, bad, how bad the virus was. So that, that explains why it, people like places like the US and Europe took it like, pretty, pretty likely. Yes, I put that squarely on the doorstep on the laps of WHO. Yeah. Um, it's, not more of, it's not more of the United States or the Western world. There's an agency that was established by the world um, to watch the watch the watchdog those issues, and it expected that WHO was supposed to be uh, the, the 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 organization that everybody looked up to, and whatever they came up with. So we expected that WHO would have seen that. Don't forget um, the DG of um, WHO, whatever, then said that it hasn't gotten to a point where it could be declared a, a pandemic, pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. and that was the mistake. Uh, that was why at times when um, Trump was a bit annoyed uh, okay. with, with him and we did this, and I was a bit, I was a bit support of him because um, there was that kind of lassity on the part of um, the, so they didn't take it seriously. And before you knew it, boom. Uh, it was a bet. To me, we are very lucky in this part of the world. Mm. Uh, if, if the effect of COVID um, is as, uh, as bad as it were, hit, hit Africa the way it's hitting other parts of the world. I don't think what we are seeing is what would have changed. Don't forget, um, a, a very popular billionaire, uh, multi-billionaire, was asking that. He's still surprised that um, the way COVID is ravaging the whole world, it doesn't seem to be happening in Africa. God has a way of shielding us. Um, God has always have a way of shielding. He knows what our problem is. That is why he gave us the kind of leadership he gave us. Our, the one he used in punishing us is leadership. And that is a fact. 
Uh, but the other ones, try to see. That's why you don't see tsunami happening in Africa. That's why you don't see because earthquake. We yes, yeah, because yeah, yeah, we have enough on our finger. It's, so by the time it adds tsunami, adds earthquake, and the rest, of, we are we are enough, we, we, oh, we have pandemic. No, 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 that was not add pandemic. <laughs> we have we the would, hunger and poverty. We would we, 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 it's poverty, not more than pandemic. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so what, I, what am I? It's what I'm saying is, funny, is no, it's not funny, but God has a way of balancing it with all due respect and to humanity. Um, so, but that has been so that is the key point. Then uh, along the line. Yeah, we also realized that that in itself affected so many things. Mm. A lot of people lost their jobs. A lot of people died. Some livelihoods. So many family mm. set up were disorganized. Then it also moved even to schools. Schools were closed. Students were not going to school. We started doing things that we've not, we were not doing before. Technology took over. The beauty of it. Why we're having this? Technology, now the whole world was not able to deploy uh, technology to yeah. do a lot of things. You remember vividly in those days, we are not having most of this um, personal contact and the rest of them. Yeah. We want to talk to CK and it's only Skype, let's do Skype, uh, uh, let's do Zoom, Zoom and the rest of them. Um, then, along the line, still talking about Nigeria, then the NSAS came. And that is, it was, I think it was the second um, tsunami. tsunami of our own and the way it was handled. And um, we are still, um, a lot of changes came. But for me, uh, I just wanted to know, and I, I don't think I'm going to know, the new police outfit, the new security outfit uh, that came, what was it, SAS? Eh, no, 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 SWAT. sorry, SWAT. SWAT. I don't know what's happening. Has I mean, it been, have they been? Heard, heard much yeah, that, 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 we've not heard so much about it. I think that was supposed to be a time frame for training and they were deployed and the rest of them. Why I'm asking this is that there is a high level of insecurity across Nigeria now. Just few days ago, in my state, the bishop, uh, one of us, Larry Bishop of Owe Diocese, was kidnapped. Mm. Until now, nothing I've heard. The Aochi, uh, um, Aochi, Bini, or Kene Road is a no-go area. People are being kidnapped. If you see stories that are coming out of diocese, we are still battling with Abuja, Kaduna. We are still battling with so many other... The governor of um, Oyo State came out um, a few days ago to talk about how some people, some um, uh, um, nationals from other countries are infiltrating Southwest and the rest of them. Despite the Moteco and the rest of them. They are so um, it is a year that everybody just pray that. It just, just, just please, just. To some people, they said, they're not going to come this year, join their year. Like I said, this year, just work. Like it just work, go, if you understand in the local parlance. But we thank God for me. For me, the greatest aspect of it, for me, is that we are alive to see today. Today? What we are alive to see today. Anybody that is alive to see today hmm. should be able to, should be grateful. The Irrespective of, you should, to see the end of 2020 should be grateful because so many souls, we are lost. We can't even count them. So many souls, we are lost this year. And, um, Chris, I, I know you're God. very passionate about education, that hmm. you're even back in school as we speak. Hmm. Yeah. What about... The issue of ASU, thankfully, we hear that the, the, the two parties, the federal government and ASU, had shared a sword, but the, the effect that it has taken on the education sector in the country, even before the, the, the coming of COVID-19, what's your take on that? Yeah, that's a very devast uh, devastating one. And, um, and it's not yet to Uhuru, as far as I'm concerned. Don't forget that other associations within the university system are already threatening. And we don't know what will come um, uh, when schools resume. Schools, federal government says schools will resume on the 18th of um, January. I hope and pray there won't be a lockdown the way things are going. I hope there won't be a lockdown, mm -hmm. which is why we are saying people should behave, irrespective of whatever. Let us behave and do the right so that we don't go back to, we don't go back to Egypt um, again like we did, where the whole country was locked down for months. Um, but for me, uh, it, it was a very terrible one. A whole academic year wasted. Uh, mm -hmm. Some students are supposed to have graduated by now. They are still within the same level. Um, the only respite is for those that um, were in the private universities who, were, who engaged in uh, online and also when the schools were resumed, when the school resumed and the rest of them. But the large chunk of our undergraduates are still uh, at home. And I hope that uh, this... Uh, piece of the graveyard that we have between ASU and the federal government 
will last uh, so that we don't start seeing ghosts again. <laughs> but yes, because if it's a piece of the graveyard, definitely you see that if those agreements were not um, implemented, yeah. then the spirit will start uh, resurrecting so again. Yes, and also said it that there will be no other notice that they are not going to give the federal government. You know, it used to be, oh, we'll give you seven days, we'll give you 14 days, we'll give you two months notice. But this time around, but it should be in the interest of um, the students, the mm -hmm. federal government, and also should see, make sure that what both are working is for the benefits of the students. And if um, they are not doing that, then we're, we're, we're in deep uh, trouble. Um, but economically also, um, we yes. didn't fare well. We didn't fare well in... 2020, everything uh, came to a point where the um, crude oil was sent well, about fifteen dollars, ten dollars. In fact, that was, it got to it almost zero. Yes, yes, the minus, and um, that in itself also affected a lot of things. So, the budget, uh, the budget didn't work in 2020 because <laughs> all the predictions um, um, under which the uh, budgets were predicated, <laughs> we couldn't we're fulfill them, that yeah. it, it, it did not come to reality. So for that, the planning was terrible. And um, so I hope, it, it, you know, you see what I've been using, the word hope, yes. hope, hope. Yes. And uh, I hope and believe that 2021 will be a very different year. In all, of this, in all of this, Chris, what are the lessons for you? The lessons for me um, as a nation is that we should realize that we should be prepared, just like Boy Scouts. In Boy Scouts, always, always, always ready. Uh, in Boy Scouts, always is uh, always be prepared. Uh, anything can happen. Um, it has become, you know, Charlie Boy show in those days. On Charlie Boy show, anything can happen. Um, so um, it has become the world as a global village has become anything can happen at any given point in time, politically, economically, socially, and that. And that is why our leaders have to put up their thinking caps. Mm. Um, the way we are, we are doing, the way we are going about governance is not the way. The, the world has gone beyond what we are doing. We are just crashing leadership. Right? We are still talking of how to build roads, how to provide water, how to, we, we don't have enough electricity. Uh, electricity companies increasing their tariff and the rest of them uh, sharing palliatives. And the world has gone beyond all this one we are doing. These are part of what the world did in the 60s and the rest of them we are, we are still battling with. So we must be in tune with realities and make sure that yeah. in our planning, in our plowing, we make sure that we get it right, just like every other, our neighbors are getting it right. If Ghana is getting it right, well, I don't see why it's Nigeria cannot do. All right, Chris Kane Denwadi is the publisher of CKN News. Thank you so much for being part of News Hub. We wish you a very happy new year in advance. Same to you, dear. Same All right. You. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for watching as well. We'll take a very short break. When we come back, you get even more real on the show. We have a very special guest. You can't afford to miss it. So just stay around and enjoy. <laughs>